camera's hot too. <laughs> Maybe if I get out of the shot, it'll be just a little hotter. Good day, eh? Welcome to the show. I'm Marijuana Man, and this is from Under the Influence. Here in beautiful downtown Vancouver. Just getting a reefer ready. Yeah, welcome to the proceedings. Another uh, kind of a overcast. Well, no, it was a beautiful sunny day today, yeah, wasn't it? Was <coughs> <laughs> huh, hard to remember. I don't know, maybe a full moon or something last night. Seems odd. I think the full moon's tonight, really. But that's just me. Because I know more about the moon than anyone else on the planet. <laughs> But not more than people on the moon. No. <laughs> they don't lie. They don't know nothing. <laughs> All they know is, hey, can you get rid of these fucking Land Rovers? Traffic on the moon these days. So much traffic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Well, <coughs> that was a pretty hefty little toe. <laughs> Smoking uh, some sort of cantaloupes, no, citruses, and some El Jefe. I'm not too sure what fell out of the jar. But in combination pretty nice hope you all got some good weed to smoke out there wherever you are and uh, can smoke right along with us I was sorry not to be here last weekend to join in the high noon celebrations of smoking 110 joints or something and I didn't really think about it today of doing that on this show I didn't think of it early enough to get uh, 111 joints together to see if I could match them. That's a lot of joints. It is a lot of joints in an hour. How many joints is that in an hour? More. Two. Two a minute. Almost. Do two a minute. I don't know. (laughs) That's pretty tough by yourself. One time in Australia at the Nimbin Mardi Gras festivals, we smoked joints hard all day, as we would at a festival, God knows how many. But then at midnight is when they threw their cannabis cup, and they had 52 strains entered in that one. So... We smoked all 52 of those in succession. They had an interesting cup there where all of the entries are laid out on a banquet table on plates. Just a pile of weed. And everyone, all the judges were allowed to go and inspect that we all of that weed. And then you had to pick your favorite three. And then you went away and smoked those and chose those first, second, and third. Ah, that sounds pretty good. So I was at that uh, cannabis cup more than once. And on all occasions, at the end of the competition, those that came in first, second, and third... Those plates were empty and were the only plates that were empty on the table. Everybody picked the same ones, <laughs> interestingly enough. But, of course, we weren't satisfied with that, so we wanted to try them all. So we did. So that day we probably smoked a 100 joints. 
I would have to surmise. Did, uh, did your tastes line up with three favorites? Yep. Oh yeah, everybody managed to, I don't know, they, it's not so hard to determine what's the best weed, quite frankly, in my experience. You can really tell the difference between one from the other. The the aroma, of course, uh, and the flavor, the overall kind of effect you feel, and you feel the effect right away. We had a thing years ago called the contest where I asked my viewers to send weed to us and we would judge it. Oh, that's nice of you. Mark and Chris Bennett and myself were the judges and we videotaped the whole affair. It's probably out there in the video world somewhere. Some part of it, you'd think. But, uh, so, that got to be quite a task, actually. We, were, we offered a very nice prize of uh, all expenses paid trip to our Toker's Bowl from wherever you were in the world. Oh, that's very nice then, yeah. So people responded, and uh, weeds started pouring into the store here in the mail. <laughs> and so what we would do is we would gather at the end of the day and go downstairs and videotape the proceedings and uh, smoke, I don't know how many joints we'd smoke. <clears throat> half a dozen maybe, something like that, some not too many in the beginning, but uh, so much weed began to arrive that uh, we had to increase the amount that we were smoking all the time, and then it got to the point where we had to like fucking do or die, because it was getting too late to be able to ship somebody in for the party, <laughs> and uh, I think the last night we smoked 18 strains. But oddly enough, throughout that experience, you could still remember from week to week. Now, somebody else looked after all the statistics for us and the names and all the, the rankings that we had given it. And, uh, but, uh, you know, when we would get together the next week and you'd light up the first one, you'd go, well, you know, it's not as nice as the fucking one that we think is the nicest so far. You could, it's just, and well, maybe this one has a chance. And, uh, but you could really remember it. And when I've smoked joints in a competition, like one after another for me is the very best. You just, I'd rather only have a couple hits off each one rather than. Yeah, I, I find that uh, if I want to keep smoking, then it's I must be pretty happy with it taste wise. I remember uh, one went out on uh, Carly and I. And we were both obsessed. It was like we were like, oh, grab that lighter. And it was like, whoa, wait a minute. This this must stand above the rest if I'm worried that it's going out. <clears throat> well, maybe that's a consideration too. So, I don't know. You can. I think you can tell the difference. People always say, oh, how could you? But I don't know. I can feel the different effect right away from each joint if you do it quick enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to smoke it quickly enough. Yeah. Although, yeah, kind of. Because it either picks you up or lays you back or doesn't do anything to you, really, the new joint. Because every joint has its own impact on you. <clears throat> Diff you differently than if you smoke two joints of the same strain in succession. That, that <laughs> There's no point smoking the second one, really. I think you become uh, <laughs> sensitive to the effect. Uh, familiar, you go, oh, yeah. Yeah, more of that. the substance isn't strong enough to uh, to overtake you each time. I don't think. I don't know how many, how much. Years ago, in High Times Magazine, there was a guy who was called the drug connoisseur, and he wrote uh, articles about cannabis around the world. And he said at one point that. His most often asked question was, how much do I need to smoke to get the full effect? The full effect. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if they said full effect. 100%. But the full effect. people uh, 
asked, asked him that uh, how much they needed to smoke. So he's set about himself trying to figure that out. And uh, so he hit uh, he hit Andre. <laughs> TJ patient. Pull. No, he uh, figured that uh, he needed two joints in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> two joints in the afternoon. <laughs> no, he actually came to the conclusion that really at any moment he needed three tokes. Well, he felt that more than three tokes was not having any different effect on him. Up to three. Yes. I saw. I've definitely smoked cannabis where I thought after one hit, I thought, "Oh yeah, this is definitely on." But to have the full effect. Oh, the full effect. That's right. <laughs> full effect. All right, three. So three. There and you. after I read that too, I tested that out a few times, and uh, he's probably right. You don't need that much cannabis to get the full effect of it. And more, <laughs> and more, <laughs> more doesn't do much. Like in our lives, it, when if you smoke a joint and uh, you're in a c- scenario where you just ride on that <laughs> one joint for as long as you do, right? That's not increased by smoking the whole joint, <laughs> right? If you stopped at three tokes you would ride it that same distance, same amount of highness, I think. But we just go the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Cannabis has always been approached from a point of view, we don't really know, we might as well err on the side of fucking doing too much. <laughs> right? You don't want to do too little. That's the key here. You want to just make sure. <laughs> but did just return from uh, a cannabis competition. And Nil was there as well. The Prairie Medicinal Harvest Cup. In Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for you map hounds out there. Oh, you I want, love it. You a, want to GPS a, it. It's a favorite. Cause, because... It's easy to draw. It is the flatlands of Canada, Canada, the prairies, if you will. And uh, an interesting place, to say the least. There's Saskatchewan, a com- just a rectangle in Canada. It's got no. They're straight-edged province. So it was like minus 20 while we were there, which is fucking brutal. Now that I've lived in Vancouver this long. Oh, yeah. I definitely uh, definitely really see the difference. I thought it was the... But yeah, our good buddy Jeff Lundstrom puts this on every year and has for nine. This is the ninth annual, which is uh, quite an achievement, I have to say. Saskatoon is a fucking very conservative place. I think. I don't know. Uh, RCMP. All these years, this has gone on quite apparently. Uh, There's no reason why they wouldn't know. That we were in a hall downtown Saskatoon, fucking hotboxing the place illegally then. <laughs> but no, nothing. Not all these years. So good on him for, I don't know, blazing the way to no trouble. One year there was an RCMP wedding took place in the hall right beside us mm. with sharing vents. <laughs> <laughs> So the hall owners beside us came over and said, uh, you know, can we cover these up? And we said, sure. And received no complaint from that point on. <laughs> we were, the, 
in the smoking tent out the back of that place that night while the, so the smoking tent came out but the the door and stairs from the adjoining building was right behind our tent and uh, I remember being in there with Jody and uh, God knows what we were talking about some how much we hated fucking whatever about and uh, the door opened and it was lit so it was a silhouette to us through the tent and the guy a guy stepped out with the most cop looking head you've <laughs> ever fucking seen in this silhouette right you go wow that's a cop <laughs> and we all fucking stopped talking right <laughs> It's purely on the silhouette of this guy's head. Just on the oh, silhouette. Oh, you know. Yeah. Look at the size of so now, so out to Saskatoon, a couple plane rides from here, one to Calgary, one to there, and uh, it uh, <laughs> was fairly uh, painless in the airports. Yeah, it was pretty smooth. I was surprised. There was uh, uh, one of the guys I flew uh, back with told me that his, uh, his daughter worked for Aurora, and uh, she still calls her her dealer, her guy. He said, oh, "Yeah, it was <laughs> surprising." <laughs> yeah, it was a very nice flight. It was a very nice flight. Yeah, easy enough, eh? The year before, coming out of Saskatoon, I don't know. They had to de-ice the plane, and it took a really long time. And we got into Calgary late, and I missed my connection. So, like, just by seconds, too. The lady said, uh, I said, so, and she said, well, WestJet customer service is that way. <laughs> and uh, that's all she told me. And when I got up there, it was just packed with people. Fucking huge lineup. Some sports team involved in it all. And uh, so I didn't even know what was going on or what to expect here. So I tried to go to the counter to ask. And they would have none of that. And nor would the people standing in the line. They were well, they <laughs> don't know. When glowering you're at me because I was anywhere near the counter. So I went and got in the back of that lineup not knowing what was going to occur. And uh, nobody got in the lineup behind me. And I thought, ah, oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> right, how the fuck am I going to get out of Calgary now? And begin to go, ah, fuck, I'll be here all day. What if I have to stay overnight? I'm fucked. I, you know, don't even have a credit card to get a hotel or nothing, right? But, uh... That's the point of flying, right? You're like, I don't want to stop here. I need to travel. Yeah. <laughs> I need to not be here. <laughs> and so, eventually, somebody did come along the lineup, and I found out that it was, in fact, the lineup to be in to get another seat out of here. So anyway, it took fucking long, a really long time, everybody at the counter, and uh, <laughs> finally I get up to the counter, and the girl says to me, uh, do you have any checked luggage? I said, no, just carry on. And she said, do you want to fly right now? <laughs> I said, yeah. So she called the plane and had them wait for me, and <laughs> I whipped down there and got onto a virtually empty plane. We were like, there was nobody in my row or in the row in front or behind. It I was just, just had fucking, an empty one, I guess. Oh yeah, just stretch out. And uh, <laughs> and I thought, wow, that was interesting. My entire delay in, in Calgary consisted of me standing in that line. <laughs> huh, that worked out pretty good. And nor could I conceive at the end of the line that that was going to be the outcome. So I kind of learned a bit of a lesson to fucking chill out about shit that you can't control <laughs> oh, people get hopped up about well you I do in your own head 10 minutes in an hour a year and the bags <laughs> didn't come and, and my you, cat was on a different <clears throat> carousel and you only think of bad things with the unknown right oddly enough so it's an unknown why don't you just make up good shit I couldn't have made that up I wouldn't have had even knew it would be an option to me. Oh, how would you like no further delay? 
airports are weird places, so people are too stupid in airports. The more stupid than they are outside. They're much they're like uh, shopping malls, but with the worst, the ultimate parking lot, the most difficult yeah. parking decision, because when you're not in the mall, you have yeah. to be in the air or in security, <laughs> and so it brings out those yeah. types of traits. No. In, uh, people in are, nice as soon as you me. step into an airport, there's you are now told what to do by everyone. Oh, yeah. Right? So you don't have to think anymore. So people don't. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Oh, I can shut that off? Oh, okay. <laughs> They're just trying to figure out how to bring as much shit with them as they can. <laughs> bring as much as you can. <laughs> the amount of stuff people drag onto the aircraft, too, is just fucking nuts. You, take it all you go, off, wait a second. I thought there can. was just so much you, you could actually, actually could bring in carry on. Like, I always thought there was just so much you could, but it doesn't seem no. so. They got backpacks and fucking suitcases and purses and you know, big and jackets flights, and shit. All the flights were like an hour, and yet still, people had bags. So bags. much they stuff like, they want to drag on. Plus, they probably got checked luggage, and you go like, really? Why do you need to check all this, this shit? This is what you need. This is what you're taking on the plane. That you don't so need you at all. You no, know, you need it. You're bringing it with you. Well, it occurred to me uh, at I the brought be- a book. <laughs> <laughs> at the start of the flight, they said anybody, they said, so, you know, the flight is full and cuts down on the amount of room we have for in-flight baggage. So they said if anybody wants to check their in-flight baggage, it'll be free of charge and... That would be good. Oh, yeah. They do that a lot <clears throat> now, I've noticed. So, I half thought of doing that because I don't like dealing with suitcases. But then you go, oh, I'll probably have to wait two extra minutes when I get into Vancouver. Mm. <clears throat> Could have gone for a smoke. <laughs> mm. That wasn't 20 below zero. When I arrived back to Vancouver, the temperature had increased 30 degrees from, <laughs> from 30 when I degrees. I don't know. Yeah. was it 30 how cold it was, was minus it 21 when we left and oh, it no, was plus terrible. nine here or some fucking thing so fair enough yeah but uh, so <laughs> it was interesting but the cup was way fun you know a smaller turnout than usual um, not as easy anymore to find sponsors and people wanting to rent tables and stuff like that, right? Uh, I don't know. People have either gone further underground or are trying to become legitimized somehow or whatever, but we noticed that last year too with 420 how less people after legalization were coming around. But um, it did fill up over the weekend. Uh, Jeff always has uh, great stuff planned. He's a very welcoming fellow, and he had big feasts f- laid out for us. Oh, with friendliest <coughs> guy by far. Yeah. yeah. It's not just a name. Everyone is so nice. And it's always been uh, kind of a smaller affair and attended over the years by the same people, lots and lots and lots. So people, when they come, they like they do come back. So it does become like a a small family. You get to see people that you only see them at the cup, but it's fun to see them. So <clears throat> it was a pretty, you know, tough, hardcore bunch of people. I'd say that uh, stand strong out there, and so that was fun to. Uh, smaller crowd and hang out with everybody and uh, get to know people a little more than uh, I have in the past. <clears throat> I don't know, and these big busy cups you go to and you kind of just hang around with your own group, right? You get kind of, you get a table together and you fucking hang there and <clears throat> you don't kind of intermingle with everybody, but when it's smaller like this, it was way easier to do that and way more fun. It's a good mingling <clears throat> exercise. Yeah. People have to <clears throat> one area space in another so what Jeff got some sort of kinsman hall out there that uh, Sutherland Hall <clears throat> Sutherland Hall yeah that uh, you know had a stage and sound and that kind of set up and uh, 
kitchens and a uh, oh, big open area for the rest of the stuff. So, uh, and he had planned uh, entertainment throughout the weekend, which worked out pretty nice. It was great. The <coughs> guy, uh, the jazz act, I, the name slips my mind. Incredible. Sax well, his player. name was Greg. Wow. Well, that's right. It was Greg. <laughs> the only name I remember. <laughs> But, uh, and Mike Rita came out to be the host for the weekend and uh, did a stand up uh, set on the Saturday night. Great hour set, Mike Rita, yeah. He's a funny guy. I really like Mike. (laughs) If you ever get a chance to go and see him or can hunt him down and listen to stuff, it's, uh, he's pretty good. We laughed a lot all weekend. So, and so that worked out good. And what else? You got a judge's pack, smoked it, did it. It wasn't a huge judge's pack. I don't know how many strains of cannabis would have been presented, but six, nine, fucking 15 maybe. 15. How many hybrids were there? Four hybrids. Only four. So seven, ten. Ten flower and then ten flower five and or six concentrates. Yeah, half a dozen concentrates. So it was easy to do. I didn't judge all the concentrate. The one I did try tasted quite nice. Flowers were good. I enjoyed them. wasn't uh, wasn't blown away by the sativa selection, but that's always an easy that's place. always the case. Always they weren't even place. sativas. <coughs> always one, but uh, well, I have the results. Sterling brought a nice one in. C. C was the winner. Hybrid. My choices were D and B. If you want to get all the details, uh, the streams are available uh, at Block TV, and uh, as well, uh, I'm throwing them all together into a video right now. It's encoding as we speak. It'll be uploaded shortly, and it'll have all our live coverage. Yeah. What? Sativa. Grape gum was first place. Now, they were gracious enough in the competition to list it as sativa dominant. Yeah, yeah. they right. listed it so that way. Yeah, they, that's fair. That's it fair. wasn't, uh, they weren't trying to fool anybody. <laughs> and what, second place was Girl Scout cookies. Third place was Complex Sherb. Private grower. So what else? Uh, Indica. First place was Old Man Jim. It was called. Probably got it from an old guy named Jim. It would be as simple as that. Good work, Jim. And second place was Lindsay OG. And third place was Granddaddy Perps. Hybrids. What? First place, Jungle Japes. I have the jungle. Actually, you know, I have the hybrids. If you want to pull them. Well, he still has the hybrids. Second place, the Mac. And third place was Black Dosey Doe. Chem Dog was in the mix, and uh, that was the hybrids. Extract, Space Queen was the winner there. Second was Strawberry Kush. Third place was Old Man Jim, Live Resin. Oh, that was E, I think, in the kit. That one smelled. Space Queen was the winner. E. Oh, E was the winner. That was it. So, with the exception of the Sativa category, I had the same I chose all of them in the order that they came in yeah I think pretty close too <clears throat> except for two switch two of the sativas around I was seeing from the <laughs> but the rest of them I nailed it <laughs> and I suspect because a lot of people choose the same to be their favorites and as was <laughs> in Australia with the empty plate 
formula. Yeah, I think especially <laughs> head to head, you can really taste the. You really can <coughs> taste the difference in cannabis flower. Anyone who says yeah. can't, or it's all the same. It's not. Uh, it's not really tasting it. So I did manage to get to one of my favorite restaurants in Saskatoon. Poached, it's ah, called. I wanted to eat breakfast at the Western Development Museum, but didn't have enough time. Western Development oh, Museum. Oh, they got a breakfast. It's really? You think you, yeah, you think you, it wouldn't. And then I, I always recommend actually going up to the second floor, which people forget about, which is the uh, Agricultural Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm fascinated by it. There's this one guy... He, he's the reason there's apples in Saskatchewan. He planted 30, 40, 50 <laughs> types of apples, figured out how to get apples to grow. Thanks, man. Like, he's the know. guy They're nice. responsible They're nice. for apples because nice. he planted apples. Planted apples. Huh. He brought seeds over. <clears throat> From where? I don't know. I just read the blurb. I have to go back and take a look. It doesn't really, didn't really go into enough detail, but... Uh, hope there is more information on each of those. Saskatoon to me did not look like it was open. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'd say that was a pretty a pretty Like I was assessment. there for quite a few days. It was really quiet. Right? And as you drive around, you go, uh, this looks like fucking Sunday about 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, at all times. Or, Saturday, or Friday, Friday, it all looked the yeah. same. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday was especially surprising. Just uh, nothing it's going Sunday. on. I, don't know. I remember doing more things on a Sunday night. Maybe I was just. <laughs> but it is know. twenty below. <laughs> no, that doesn't mean anything. That means you're just in in, in your place truck longer. But the lights should just still have be to be on. in your truck. Signs of, <clears throat> of life. But I had a, a perfectly pleasant time. That was great. Wow! Look at all this leftover stuff from yeah, the cup. Just the, a couple hybrids and the holy uh, moly and the concert. I tried the hybrids elsewhere, so it was a it was a fair judging. I didn't judge the concentrates because I didn't get to try them. Oh. Well, you can't see nothing, but it looks like a good spinorama. Look at all the concentrates. I lost my concentrates. I left them behind by accident. How dynamic. So these are three hybrid uh, cannabis. And the rest of those are the concentrates in the foreground. Known to you as E. E was <laughs> quite... Give E a smell. They can't. Let them see it. Yeah, it's kind of fun at these little gatherings once the judges' packs start getting opened and people just begin to speak in terms of this. You go, what's that? And they go, E. <laughs> e, A, B, D. Your words oh. are reduced to just the alphabet. And the, it's some of the bigger cups, there was a lot of that because there was a lot of samples to get through. Some of, some of them are just ludicrous, the amount that they think the oh. you know, <laughs> come on. Well, let's see what you can see here in front of... Um, you know, that... Uh, crystalline looking thing nice it's really nice very uh, aromatic and nice tasting yeah it was, it was quite nice yeah it was E E which definitely was stood uh, stood out Space Queen I think Space Queen, if you look it up, is kind of a derivative of Jack Rare genetics. Subcool, maybe? Strains? I don't know. But, um, yeah, I liked F, too. F was really nice. 
It was a distillate. Super lemon haze. Super I lemon haze. I like super lemon haze. It's strange. It's flower. It's, uh... This one, to me, I don't know if it's... Pretty sure it was F. Come out of that hag. People had nectar collectors there. You smoke out of oh, one of those? Yeah. yeah. It's not a bad way to do dabs or smoke distillate. There's Alyssa in the fish tank. <laughs> Boss Alyssa's in the house. So everybody's on their usual behavior because it doesn't matter. This one, this one. You can probably not even see it. Can bear it, it's just clear distillate. Oh yeah. And to me, it smells like Coca Cola. Straight up. Coca Cola? Yep. Tastes like it too. Smells like Coca Cola wow, if yeah. it's me, if it it's been like flat. The flavor of those uh, cola balls, those yeah. Candies, like so I don't like know. It doesn't really seem like anything's been added to it to make it that way, but it could be just who knows. But it sure was nice. It did not finish, <laughs> but yeah. So another fine uh, prairie cup. Thanks a lot, Jeff. It was good to see all the people that I ran into out there. <coughs> and uh, I hope that uh, it can continue. I'm sure it will. Jeff kind of set out in the beginning to do 10 years. So good on him to do nine. Holy cow. <coughs> Well, while I was away on the weekend, the world went crazy over Don Cherry. <laughs> I've I've never been a huge fan. The world Don went Cherry. nuts I over liked Don Cherry. I kid, but then when I got older and didn't think he was so great. And, uh, I would say that if if as many people who were upset about Don Cherry right now just knew who Neil Magnuson was. You know, you know, upset. He likes hockey. He'll you know, give you hockey how upset too. they would be at him now. They yeah. would be, <laughs> they'd be much. They'd be much better off. He'll tell you all about the game, and he'll he'll talk some common sense about cannabis and hemp. And hemp, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don Cherry, a, a uh, one-time hockey broadcaster <laughs> he was coach here in Canada. Yeah, he was a coach and a player. But, uh, yeah, for many, many years, way too many years, he's been uh, on Hockey Night in Canada. And uh, he made some remarks here that uh, have uh, made everyone go berserk. And which weren't, they were, I don't know, very seemingly racist. <laughs> Remarks, I would have to say, somehow. Uh, yeah, I don't very know. Very veiled. It was a very veiled racist thing. I don't know if I found it. No, yeah, I don't know if I. I wouldn't characterize it as being overly racist, but I would. I would characterize it as being just sour in taste. Like I don't see that as being a real point of contention or conversation. I don't see. But what, what he was doing hockey. was hockey. I don't even consider it color in color commentary. Like, yeah, nothing particularly. It had nothing to do with hockey. About it, and it made me sad to be honest. Watching, uh, watching Ron McLean uh, apologize because I think he's he's an alright guy, but just that the, uh, he, the, he was even put through that. I feel bad. <laughs> so I don't consider that racist. I just think it's sad that. Yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it wasn't pointed at any particular group of people, but uh, he was bitching about people who wouldn't wear the poppy for Remembrance Day. 
A poppy? Is it the opium poppy? For the, it is for the an witch opium war? poppy, with yes. The drugs? No, no, the other war. <laughs> Ironically the enough. No, I don't know. Like, come on. That doesn't mean that I have to support the reasons that you have to remember. Right? I, just don't, <laughs> I don't support war. Why hasn't everyone remembered by now? <laughs> How about remember peace? How about remember not yeah. having war? Stop asking me to remember people who have gone to war that... How about all the places? Well, you know, I, I've got. If you're willing to do that, if you're willing to to stay, to to be on night watch, so to speak, to stay up while everybody sleeps, that's a pretty nice thing to do. But also, you know, it's it's among what? any other nice. While thing you're at do. war, if you if you believe <laughs> that you, you know your uh, area that you've decided is an area is under threat, and you decide to. Uh, uh, to keep watch over the night while you're well yeah but the, those sleep. those are the people that we are going to war against right <laughs> it's okay for them to go to war because we're attacking them uh, that's the thing I don't I'm not <laughs> down with any reason for I don't know and no nation state would have to I don't understand and here in Canada how can they've, you get all those people to wear the same shirt and beat people up like how can it be that easy it can't be it can't be. No, it's a big, big fucking machine, right? That The poppy, of course, in Canada is the symbol of not forgetting the people who died in war. Which is, I mean, it's, it's nice to remember things. I'm always looking towards the future, but it's nice to... But it's, a, it's propaganda bullshit. Because none of the wars are just. They're not. They're lying about the reasons that they're doing what they're doing. And they have every fucking war. It's not about what they say it's about. <laughs> Can you get with that? Instead? So I suppose the counter argument would be, well, it's not the... It's not their fault. It's not the veteran's fault. Why should well, it they is. Be because they're stupid enough to fall for this. Well, you can trick anybody into anything, though. You well, can. then why do I have to fucking care, then? If somebody's been tricked into something that's hideous and they died, had limbs blown off and shit, don't go to fucking war. <laughs> right? If you don't, well, what if, right. you, this is what, a, if you're, I, what if you're tricked under the illusion uh, or allusion of uh, of doing the right thing? I mean, I can't fault someone for no. wanting to do the right thing. Ha ha, but fooled you, it, that house wasn't on fire. Who, sa- who determines what the right thing is? Wow. So, ironically enough, here we are walking around, or everyone's walking around with a poppy on their chest, and the reason that their fucking cousin is over in Afghanistan is to fucking protect those poppies to make sure there's enough fucking opium for the pharmaceutical industry is how that goes. It's ironic it's a poppy. Ironic that it's a poppy. And there's no denying that it's an opium poppy because it comes from Flanders Fields where... That that's what they fashioned the poppy emblem from, was the dead soldiers un- lying under poppies in Flanders Fields. So it's all about the opium, right? But I don't support the war. I don't wear their fucking poppies, and I don't support anybody doing it anymore. I prefer to stop doing it. So if you don't stop doing it, I don't support you. Really, like all these fucking wars, like as far as everybody can remember here, have been for other reasons than they told you. <clears throat> I certainly am aware of every incursion the United States has ever been in was based on a lie that they promoted to make it okay to go attack some other thing they wanted. <laughs> every time 
Not just sometimes, but every time. Whoa. They just make up the reason. The only reason they're in Afghanistan was because of the made up fucking 9 11 attacks. <clears throat> that's it, that's all. <clears throat> so they just make up a fucking reason to go do what they want to do. And they apparently don't mind killing fucking citizens to get their way. Huh, scary. So, what am I supposed to support that, Don? Making, suggesting that I'm fucking less because I don't? Fuck you. <clears throat> you shouldn't have gone to war. Don't go to war and your fucking kids don't get killed. <laughs> and blown up. The fuck? And they're doing it to other people. While they're there. Don't just think about your own. Think about them, too. The fucking people in far-off lands that they're going over there and smashing. Could you build a peaceful <laughs> army that was designed to become an army only to dismantle another army and then itself? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. There ain't no money in that. Oh. The only reason that all of this exists is because of money. Oh, Straight up bad. money. It has like nothing to do. Idea. It really, how could it possibly have anything to do with what the Afghani people feel? That we must have some major difference with those people, the Hatfields and McCoys kind of thing, or you're going to go to feuding with, but, but you don't. You're in a fucking land here where these people have nothing to do with any of it, anything. Yeah, that, I, remember, I remember that uh, happening when I was younger what? and being really upset by it seemingly how... How, how little information people would think they would need to go on to be upset to start, uh, you know, just to start... Uh, so they go, they go there to, because they're looking for bin Laden, right? <laughs> now, do you need a major fucking air <laughs> army infiltration attack fucking mode... To, Wait, to, uh, I, I don't know what you're uh, saying. I don't, I don't know what you mean. So you mean you like all those troops that you would have moved into the area over the preceding year? Yeah, to they flood were flood a country. <laughs> thousands, and it's really thousands. if there, if anyone was looking for Bin Laden, this stuff can be so easily Maybe. staged and made up now. Like it's just so easy to do it at the levels that these people are working at. I just don't understand World Trade Center Building Seven. And well, none of it. <laughs> none of it. It's it. very obvious to anyone who has a fucking clear head that what happened there. The they lack took of it out. Fighters. Nothing That's added up. None of, nothing added up. You go, ah, this don't add up. Well, they hated your freedom. <laughs> but they, they got the chance to go smash Afghanistan and take the opium poppy. That's what they were after. Here's my suspicion. <coughs> In 2002, I think it was, the Taliban actually said, hey, to the rest of the world, we're not such bad guys here, you know, really. They're getting a bad reputation. So they said, well, we'll eliminate the opium production here in Afghanistan. We'll show you. So they did. They fucking dropped it down to the lowest it's been in a very long time. And they did it quite easily. They just threatened the farmers. They burned a couple fields and said, keep growing it. We're going to keep burning it. So they stopped growing it. They started growing vegetables and fucking having just regular normal life again. <laughs> right? And uh, they were instantly invaded. In that very September, as soon as you saw how little opium they were producing now compared to what they did, they got invaded. And the opium production went up higher than it had ever been the very next year. Right? And has continued to increase since then. So it was it was only to secure that. And that was who would you who needs that? Right? Do you think? Who do you think needs it for the pharmaceutical industry? It's all illegal opium. None of it they're allowed to have. None of it. Not a little bit, but none of it. 
and I am willing to wager that they're buying all of it. And they have for a long time. <laughs> Afghanistan didn't used to grow opium. But the CIA introduced them to it. Oh, so where is opium <laughs> native to? Like, so it only arrived after it was brought in? Yes. Across the region, across the fucking Southeast Asia, the DEA and or CIA spread opium from Burma to fucking everywhere, Nepal to fucking uh, right across, <coughs> and they used the guise of they had to go into all of these countries which bordered the southern Russia and China communist threat so they aligned themselves with all of these countries along that border and they introduced opium to all of them <laughs> so this is in like fucking 1948 or something like that these people are doing this shit they have control of the opium industry since then there's not a chance the CIA took a break on having <laughs> control of or. that f industry so in the 1980s when Russia came knocking at Afghanistan or around their doors they all went to a fucking war there in Afghanistan against each other and decimated that country to the degree where the only thing they had left to possibly grow was opium poppies. And it turns out that Afghanistan is the best place in, on earth to grow it. The, the yield is huge compared to Burma and all other places. <coughs> so it's a really, really good place to grow it. <coughs> so, no, it's a bullshit war, right? That's why they're there. <clears throat> they only went to Vietnam to secure the heroin trade in Southeast Asia. Huh. That's it, that's all. It's the only reason they were there. Err. Well, I'm sure there's always more And to have war. War. Oh. war is worth gazillions of dollars. Because so you burn everything in. So fucking like, much blows money. Up, everything blows Everything needs to be rebuilt. Hopefully, it's burn it all down. Yep. And that's the problem. War isn't the problem. The problem that war is worth so much. So, how do you remind people? <laughs> well, do you that? don't. They don't even fucking know they work for it. <laughs> right? They, they don't even know they're working for the fucking military complex. They thought they were making nuts and bolts. But it's massive, right? And it cannot stop and will not stop. And they're working hard every day to figure out how to keep it going is what they're doing. It's worth their money to continue it. They do not want it to stop. So... Yeah, they, like, they like the way that burns, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Until you get to that end. But I don't know how you get it to stop. It's just worth too much money. And drugs are right second to that. <laughs> so, it's just too much Every money. Every other day of the year, wear a peace sign. So... I don't really know the Second World War that much, but it, it's it's going to be similar. <laughs> There's every reason to be there. There's not the real reason it was actually going on. I so I don't normal. trust them. I don't trust that uh, <laughs> that stuff. Too few people actually have to know. Right? It, too few people have to know the truth, right? To have 
a massive fucking war. <laughs> if you have this at the your level command, of the war yeah. is the, I suppose, the other end. The, the truth greater, of the why secret, you're doing it, huh? The secret behind it all. Yeah. So the, the less people who know the secret behind it, the larger the war. It's an interesting, uh, interesting idea. Well, if only a couple, a handful of people know that you're just trying to wrap up the fucking heroin deal in Southeast Asia. And it's a really good chance to waste trillions of dollars. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. But And, like, how fucking hideous. Because there could be no other reason. <laughs> there was no other reason they were doing it. You go, wow, that's fucking cold. How oh, you can condemn all these people to death. To, well, I'm to sure you're, do you're this. telling yourself other to things. To do oh, this. I'm helping out the good business. Some of them aren't, though. Some, some of them know. Oh, I'm sure some. Right? Some yeah, of them some know. Of know. Well, they do. Because it's that way. Right? They know they're doing it that way. They know that the heroin was being shipped back in the body bags. <clears throat> See, they took over the heroin trade from the French, who had it up till then. The French were in Vietnam for some time before U.S. came along. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a famous true. movie called The French Connection. I didn't realize they also uh, controlled the drug trade. Heroin all went to Marseille in France until the Americans came to town and then it all went back to the States. <laughs> and it's worth fucking trillions of dollars. I think people like heroin. I think that's going to it might catch so, on. So <laughs> then they took over the cocaine trade in Central and South America. CIA. 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 They run it all. They always have. So whatever ever we've read about any of those industries or any kingpins that exist or cartels is by the grace of the CIA only. How could it not be? <laughs> they, that's where all the, all the drugs come from. They are the top of the heap. And it trickles down from there. We've also just had, a, if that's the case, a longer uh, uninterrupted run Regardless of whether they're, they're good at it or not, the CIA. Like if, if you well, were they just kill, supposedly they able just kill to run, you. they just well, kill you. That's what I mean, if you're able just to run one of these businesses with no interruption mm. because you're your own law, regardless of whether you're that great at it or not, you'll just get better if you're if you're into there's it. I suppose really unfortunate. There's no gang or cartel in Mexico that isn't uh, there because the CIA says it's okay, and they get their product from them. Cheaper to All sub contract. <clears throat> well, it's they ha they do it that way to keep it confusing. Works in their advantage to have the world think it's about the cartels doing it, not them. Right? But there's not a chance that they're not in complete control. That there's just no way it could be that way because they always have been, well, and they don't if, uh, lose control of that. Either that or it's, it, maybe it is also very difficult. I mean, really having to find one man. Maybe the, the GPS doesn't really work the way they say it does. Maybe what do you it, mean? Maybe you really would need an army to find a man. Bin Laden? <laughs> no, not him, though. <laughs> not in the mountains on a kidney. You only need a fucking <laughs> covert. We're going to blow up the whole country to find this old man. Co well, because that's we what they that's the what they did. You found the mixtape. They went and smashed the Afghanistan streets. looking for Bin Laden. Ridiculous. And then, of course, some covert fucking special ops team finds them. You go, well, why did you just send the special ops team in the first place? You wouldn't have to go blow up he Afghanistan go unless you had some other reason. He could be anywhere. <clears throat> He's probably There's on a. Mountains. We're gonna check. We're all going to walk across the country holding hands in one big line. He <laughs> bin Laden. I don't know how you do that sort of thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go looking for something like that. I'd go looking to make 
everyone else feel better. Hey, I'm sorry, all those people, you know, maybe like let's try to rebuild things, etc. You know, can you yeah, grow something other than fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. What? Drake announced here in Canada that he's. I don't know. I don't know what he announced, really. I think the, I think the <laughs> offer was, as I read it, and I could be wrong. Human canopy he's offered, growth. He's been offered a portion of a company to agree to essentially be the spokesperson of it. But I don't, I mean, I, I have no issue with Drake. Um, I don't dislike him. He's got some, he's rapped on some hot beats. He's had some nice songs. But I don't think of him as like a real cannabis rapper. And I, I also don't think that... Uh, he is really, I don't think he is as into the idea as he thinks. Like, it, it seems like a good business decision for him, but I think if he really thought about it, and he probably just, he's doing 50 other things, so he's not. But if he was, if he was like, if he came down and, and had a chat, <laughs> I, I guarantee you he would feel differently about the matter. I thought and that's I also what's think <laughs> he could do better on his own by far. Like, why do you need a company that lost? You know, over a billion dollars last quarter. I, I, I just yeah. think it's cheaper to grow pot, and he clearly has money. And if he wanted he's to do just it right, getting suckered into owning canopy growth. Yeah, he could, really, <clears throat> he could do his own thing. He could partner with. <laughs> yeah, he could do a lot of other things that would be. Well, I suspect friend, anything they need to introduce, they're going to call it just flake. <laughs> flake by Drake. But I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> No, who cares? I thought that's what Snoop Dogg was for, Martha Stewart. Well, I think Snoop's the same situation. I think it's a good, it's a good name. He has, like, he doesn't have to smoke the weed. I don't know. There's no. I don't think know. Just they don't have to do it. it. They he only smoke. get. He would understand. He would. They just it. use the moment when they make the arrangement and announce it, and then they don't. They are not. There's nothing after that yeah, because they can't but also his, his piece is probably <laughs> elsewhere like i'm sure if he thinks uh, i signed this deal and then so he's going to change the name to runs, drake that's all the uniforms and he's like whatever or whatever else it is so now that he owns canopy growth he'll change the name to what buy my weed buy I, drake I, weed i'd still rather drake weed i'd still rather buy from push T. i'd still rather buy <laughs> i'd rather buy his weed. doesn't matter if push had weed i'd be more interested uh, than if drake did and why don't they uh market why don't they go look for some good growers yeah then, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> people that's who know the something thing. about how to grow cannabis uh, that'd be a know, good maybe start would line up to to grow for him but yeah that's, that's what i mean he, he could even not being uh, deep in the culture could easily have used his influence without needing like <clears throat> he's being weighed down by this deal more than yeah. he thought he could have found it. <clears throat> yeah man wow he could have really he could have done something like he really could have shot high for this one unfortunate so unfortunate. yeah so but far. the bubble well. I'm sure <laughs> yeah doing well with everything and let's and pawn it off to Drake treats him well Nah, the smoke bubble in the cannabis world is bursting. <clears throat> I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's just fucking bleak. If he waited a bleak. bit, he could have even maybe picked up a facility that was already compliant and then changed. Like he could well, he can just be stay being a rapper. <laughs> well, I would say, wow. That's right? He's only thing. there because yeah, of his yeah. celebrity position, not his cannabis whatever. He's not. He's in a totally different world, so I don't care. I've not listened really much to his music. Toronto, they'll glom on to people and fucking drive <laughs> you to death with them. All right, they, he's like the blue rodeo of fucking modern times. Uh, <coughs> I mean, All right, I've got love for him. But so, but he, <laughs> you know, so what? Who cares? It doesn't change the fact that they don't have very good weed, <laughs> and competitive prices huh <laughs> and that's the problem too, you know? that's the think, problem I don't think be down with all the lobbying to have people <laughs> arrested that's not uh, well he won't do anything it doesn't matter he's just Drake for fuck's sakes he's just Snoop Dogg he's just Martha Stewart he's just a name and a face that has nothing to do with cannabis they don't know anything about cannabis. I don't care. Unless he's going to grow the dank. What fucking difference does it make? they still got the same pinheads growing whatever crap they're growing now. 
because <coughs> most of them have no idea what they're doing. <coughs> it's a shame because I think uh, you could do so much with a plant that's been so nice to you. I'm sure, I'm wow. sure Snoop would, uh, would bless cannabis. A good, we'll get an opportunity to bless it back, but... Uh, yeah, well, you has, don't has go and get greenhouses the size of a football field. That's your first mistake. <laughs> right? Because they didn't know what they were doing. Because they didn't know. They went and fucking got greenhouses. Gross. <clears throat> so, there you're fucked right off the bat. Idiots. <clears throat> And the idiots that gave them money because they're now their new potential because they bought another football field. <laughs> right? That'll teach you. <laughs> You're gonna, you've lost all your money. <laughs> They'll devalue all these companies. The bottom will drop out of the worth of their stock and all the poor schmoes that came along to make it into the billions get lost with the losses. That's how the stock market works. <laughs> the people who offer the stocks fucking walk with it all. Yeah, if you have the ability uh, to shift uh, public opinion what? in a large way, I guess you make money on the come up and then hopefully jump off without getting greedy. It's really unfortunate. But they're not making any money, really. They're fucking any of these companies. Because it's all built on potential. Right? They're not able to. And here in Canada, I think the public is overwhelmingly saying, yeah, you know, don't want your shit. We yeah, just I don't, don't want your they weed. They have a glut and have stores not be full. I mean, that means, I don't know, you're just not selling enough, so you just don't even ship it out. You need to target well, like, I think that's price. what's going on. But it, here's you another thing when I was. Sales licenses, but even then, like, I, don't I hear a lot of talk out there in the world of uh, these LPs buying weed in the black market, too. I, he I hear that Which that's a like big why, thing why now. Why go to those lengths if you have these football field grows? Because they can't want. grow the. G <laughs> they don't know how to grow it. <clears throat> to success. Well, you can't. What are you gonna fucking in a greenhouse at minus twenty? We're in Vancouver now when it's fucking cold and wet in a greenhouse. Give me a fucking break. Well, wow, that's like cold and wet in the, in the building, is it? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Well, you <laughs> got to. No first of all, you got to fight off the cold with technology, mm -hmm. heaters. Yeah. And the wet is another thing altogether. Right? Yeah. Humidity is a big fucking no no in a greenhouse or in any garden. You don't want it humid. And they can't fucking... They don't even know that, it would seem. <coughs> Idiots. Much easier to get a enclosed indoor grow room to the right conditions than it is in a greenhouse. <coughs> and they're probably blocking out the very rays of the sun that they think they're taking advantage of by being in a greenhouse. I bet they're blocking them out with the type of glass that they use to build their greenhouse. <laughs> so, oops. <clears throat> so I don't know what's going to go on here. Forbes magazine. I don't know why Forbes is reporting this stuff, but they're saying there's a st huge stockpile of cannabis here in Canada. Stockpile? Uh, what? They don't ever say why. Right? They just don't ever say why. <clears throat> so, uh, sitting on a mountain of inventory, it's too much weed, it says. Makes right? It makes industry nervous. watchers nervous. And then it just goes into gobbledygook about so many fucking numbers to justify having even an article about it. <clears throat> Unfinished inventory of dried cannabis has nearly tripled, reaching a staggering 328,000 kilograms at the end of August. So and that compares to roughly 118,000 kilograms eight months earlier. So they're overall producing 
Wow, that's very interesting. So more than 150,000 so kilograms. So they're overproducing year. compared to the potential of their sales because they bought all, they got all these greenhouses. By quite a large amount. Huh? By quite a large amount. That's an incredible sum to just keep. Oops. And you can't just, what are you going to do, shut them all down for a sec? You need the new weed. What are you going to do with the old weed? Edibles are so low dose, it can't all be distillate. Yeah. So even then, what would you people don't even want this with that much? I don't think you can metabolize single molecule isolates as uh, as readily as people will <laughs> seem to think. I think. You're gonna have a lot of problems with a lot of those drinks and other things. Oh yeah, that's where they dump all their crappy weed into all the drinks and edibles and <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. They gave you no answers as to why this is whatsoever. Right. But they're hoping against hope that somebody will somewhere want to buy their weed. According to this article, they're saying the sales of dried flour reach blah, 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 blah. Uh, so the total inventory tracked by Health Canada was nearly 30 times the industry's monthly sales rate. Have you ever, as, do you know anyone who's ever been I don't saying know what on, that means. been buying 30 times the amount of weed that they can sell in their store? That's a pretty big stash of weed for a store, isn't it? 30 times for one store? I don't understand that uh, paragraph at all. It says with sales reaching just 13,000 kilos Kilograms in, in August. August. So in that means total inventory. 115. Yeah, that's right. So if so in eight months they, it's all, they produce 118,000 kilograms and they cannot Dude, sell they just lose you 13, numbers, yeah, they right? sell 13,000 <clears> in August <throat> wow so we'll have to see what's coming I don't know there's got to be some sort of legal challenges I see on the horizon <clears throat> there's got to be some ways to challenge this whole thing. I don't believe too much of it's constitutional, really. I don't think any of it's <clears throat> constitutional. I don't understand how it can be both legal and illegal at the same time, how it's perfectly fine for yeah. one guy to set foot in the building just because of his license and not for another. Like, what is the value of this license? It sure as fuck is in 14 years. Yeah, so interesting. City of Mississauga, they're now whimpering. They, uh, in Ontario, for some unknown reason, the provincial government allowed the cities and towns to opt out of having cannabis before they could did anything, <laughs> right? So these pinheads in Mississauga... Somebody passes a joint, and you're the first person at the door in Mississauga. Oh, no, 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 just that uh, way. Can't and come here. Oh, what did you do, man? Hey, we opted out. You could just keep passing it, man. You don't have to So, <laughs> no. Mississauga Council now is reconsidering retail pot. Startled. After the mayor, Bonnie, was startled by the illegal cannabis outlets in her city. She was very, very startled. startled, not just startled, <laughs> very, very startled <laughs> by the amount of unauthorized cannabis business. So, hey, go back above the picture there. She said that the full cost of allowing cannabis stores from enforcement to public health and education is to be determined. The full cost. You go, wow, like, really? What's the full cost? It well, that means so she just has no number. She can't, she can't calculate the They just haven't figured out how the much to, they want to suck out of the system. They don't right? know. Well, we don't know. It's so expensive that we don't know, and because we don't know, boy, she it's going to be expensive. Here's the, here's the strangest thing is that top paragraph. Certainly there would be a much higher bylaw cost than we had anticipated. Uh not too sure what that means the key here is higher cost right so there would be certainly there would be much higher bylaw cost than we had anticipated certainly she said she, it's certainly. obvious to her it's that certain. we, we, we didn't anticipate it but here's the weird thing she said 
<clears throat> higher bylaw costs than we had anticipated, given the proliferation of the illegal outlets to purchase. <laughs> like, what the fuck does that mean? The proliferation of the illegal outlets to purchase. I can only assume a license. So I guess she would say if there were more illegal stores and there were more of them, we would have charged more for the license because we know we could. Because they were doing such great business, we could charge them whatever we want. It's just such Bonnie, she was startled. She shit. was startled she was startled so why is she saying anything why don't you wait until you're unstartled before <laughs> you start <laughs> spewing off about stuff Bonnie oh. no that's fucked up <clears throat> so all they're talking about is money where do we get our money how come we can't get tax money we want money everybody wants money all the cops want money but city of Calgary, it's their costs, pot related costs have soared to $10 million. And they, it's like they're blaming cannabis. <laughs> no, they really do. What are you watering these things with? $10 million? Cannabis capital, pot related, has driven it to $10 million. And that's not really the case here. The city drove the fucking ten million dollars, right? It's all about the, the city. They're just asking for anyway. The costs rise. You mean well, they're just them, saying, I want. what the fuck did you spend it on? Nobody asked any of that in any of these articles. What did you spend all this money on? <laughs> right? Well, and it all went to the cops. Six point seven million of the ten million have gone to the Calgary police. To Calgary police. Should they oh. have more free time on their hands? Shouldn't like all, dropping all what the What did stuff, they do with it? Like the what best? have they done with it? Nobody asked that. What the fuck are you doing with six point seven million dollars? Why do you need that much money? To have legal cannabis. Wow, well, blah, blah, something what? edibles. Something, what? Something driving. Something's kids safety. What about uh, hysteria? City administration has spent $3.6 million in cannabis-related costs. $3.6 million? The city of Calgary has spent $3.6 million since what? 2016. How many business licenses is that really? What do you, what do you, wow, that is incredible. How, uh, on what? What have you spent that on? Right? <clears throat> so now they're bitching about, well, what? Well, uh, city staff also pointed out some positive economic benefits from cannabis legalization with physical retail spaces and facilities contributing an estimated construction value of $16.7 million. And what the fuck does that mean? Well, it's good for building things. People built dispensaries. The people. taxpayer dumped out $16.7 million to contractors in the city of Calgary because of cannabis stores for the government. <laughs> That's what that is. Well, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if it's clear. With physical retail spaces, facilities contributed and estimated. Building the value. federal production facilities. Yeah, it's all fucking just a big scam. <clears throat> 154 more locations have been approved. It says Edmonton has the most retail stores with 49, followed by Vancouver with 15. Not. We don't have 15 legal stores in Vancouver. Government legal stores? I haven't heard about that many. Maybe really? Five. Yeah, yeah if. I've only heard of like four yeah, or I some fucking. Well, I don't know. The Development. Th yeah, Vancouver 15. Doubt it. 
one, two. Look at they just keep so close track of everything, right? It's such a under such a microscope. We must know everything about every bit of cannabis across Canada. You can't just have right? cannabis. Oh man, the risk involved. Just that flower in a bag. The risk. Oh, the risk. You couldn't yeah. have a whole cup where people just smoke joints all the time. You couldn't possibly smoke a hundred joints and not go insane. The most <sighs> dangerous substance. Yeah. Well, we try to be here to prove that. So, hope everybody out there is doing okay and uh, things continue well for you. You aren't, well, <laughs> the summer you're in a deep freeze for sure. Oh my God. <clears throat> so, stay warm and uh, lit inside. <clears throat> and um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Anil for uh, keeping me in focus. <laughs> and uh, enjoy your days. We'll be back next week. God willing and the river don't rise. So until then, I'm Marijuana Man. Thanks for watching. Peace and pot. Hello. Hi. 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 It's high noon here in the studio. Look at it. Look at the bud. So many people, and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I was like, I have to cross it. Acronyms, baby. Oh my God. I love so they paid eight like, bucks for half a pencil. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> just just point it out there. Hi there. Welcome to the 420 Lifestyle Show. I'm Carly Marley. She's taking a dab. <laughs> Um, uh, we can play the Sick Moose video. Oh, yes, yeah, Sick Moose video. Oh, okay. Let's play yeah. the Sick Moose video. <laughs> Let's play the like